Inshallah, today I want to touch on a topic that's rarely spoken about and rarely understood by many. In order for you to understand this topic, I will give you an example. Is there a difference between somebody who, when the time of Salah enters, they perform their Salah? Between this person and the one who is always thinking about Salah, the one who is attached to the Masjid, there is a difference. The second is higher in level than the first. Second example, is there a difference between somebody who, when it comes to helping somebody financially, they go out and help them, they give them something. It's a good deed, no doubt. However, higher than this is the person who, who's always thinking about and looking for those in need, looking for those who are deserving. And when you understand this concept, you come to realize why Allah Jalla wa Ala says the people of Jannah will be on different levels. So yes, everybody is doing a good deed. However, the way you thought about that good deed, what was in your heart ultimately makes a difference. A person may ask, how can I attain the level where I'm constantly attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? constantly thinking about good deeds I should be doing. The answer is, in fact, there are many answers. However, the main answer is to rectify that which is in the heart. <coughs> and when you understand this concept and go through the, the verses of the Quran, the, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, find that he constantly reminds us about purifying what's in the heart. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, in the body there is a piece of flesh. If this piece of flesh is sound and healthy, the whole body is healthy. If it's corrupted, the whole body is corrupted. Indeed, it is the heart. A lot of us hear this hadith and we think, yes, it's important to do good deeds. But the heart itself requires a lot of maintenance. The heart itself requires purification. The heart itself requires strengthening. That's why Allah Jalla wa Ala blessing the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He tells him that it's not only to do with what you have which is apparent. Rather, it's to do what's in the heart. Dressing him, telling him that he has wahi and revelation, he says, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Even though you have this revelation, if you were hard and harsh, and your heart was hard. Notice how he's speaking about the heart. If your heart was hard, the people wouldn't have taken this message. Speaking about a person, in the Quran, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, They are those women and nasi may yu'jibuka qawluhu fil hayati dunya. When you look at them, apparently you are amazed, you are intrigued. It seems that what they are doing is correct. However, Allah Jalla wa Ala wa yushhidu Allah ala ma fi qalbih wa huwa aladdu al khisam. Allah Jalla wa Ala knows that which is in the heart. Allah Jalla wa Ala knows the evil that this person has and harbors. This is when speaking about evil. When speaking about goodness in the heart, Allah Jalla wa Ala also informs us in many verses that those whose hearts are nurtured upon goodness. Notice there's a difference. When you want to intend to do a good deed, praiseworthy, very good. But when your heart is nurtured upon goodness, you're only thinking about goodness, Allah Jalla wa Ala opens your doors. That's why he tells the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya ayyuhan Nabi, O Messenger, tell those who, have, uh, who are prisoners in one of the battles, some of the Muslimun who were hiding their Iman were taken as prisoners and their wealth was taken away. So Allah Jalla wa Ala is telling the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell these people, if Allah Jalla wa Ala knows that there is goodness in your hearts, if there is goodness way in your heart, Allah will grant you goodness and He will grant you that which is better than what was taken away from you. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, it's extremely, extremely, extremely important for us not only to purify the heart, but to strengthen our hearts. And a person may ask, how do I strengthen my heart? Firstly, be attached to the Quran. In two verses, Allah Jalla wa Ala addressing the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He tells him, 
that one of the reasons we have revealed the stories in the Quran and we narrate to you all these stories is so your heart becomes steadfast. All these stories, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that are narrated to you, it's to make your heart steadfast. Point number two, a person strengthens their heart by making dua and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep them steadfast. That's why from the dua of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he taught us is Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub. Oh Allah, the one who is the changer of the hearts, the one who turns the hearts, thabbit qalbi ala deenik, make my heart steadfast upon the deen. So make dua, call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam had mentioned of one of the sins that is quite rampant today. People, they sin, especially in private, when it comes to looking at that which is haram. One of the ways, in fact, the first step you can take in order to eradicate that bad habit is to purify your heart. Dislike the sin and love goodness. And Allah Jalla wa Ala makes mention of this step in the Quran in Surah Al Hujurat, addressing the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He says, "Wala habbaba ilaykum al iman." Why do the Sahaba radiallahu anhum obey the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Why are they brilliant? Because Allah caused them to love iman. Allah made iman steadfast and firm in their hearts. Not only that, وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ He beautified that Iman in the heart. And then he says, وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْإِصْيَانَ He made them dislike that which was sinful, that which was evil, that which was immoral. So as a person may be battling when it comes to these sins, especially in private, the first step you take is to dislike the sin. How many times a person is trying to stay away from the sin, however the heart is attached to the sin. How does that person expect to rectify themselves? So firstly, start disliking the sin and fill your heart with that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you constantly ponder over this theme, you find that Allah Jalla wa Ala makes mention of people who will have a very high reward in Jannah. And one of the main reasons when you go through all the different deeds is they were attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at those who will be shaded on the Day of Judgment. We know the people, the different groups. For example, two people who loved each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They came together for this and they departed on this. But look deeper into that. These people were attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They loved for the sake of Allah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the same hadith, he tells us a man, a person who's called to commit zina, and he tells the person, inni akhafullah. What holds him back? I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this show us? He was attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us of a third person in this hadith. He says, وَرَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهِ A man who remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was alone and he teared, he cried. What does that show you? It shows that the heart was attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, this journey through life, as you pass through it, it's extremely important that you constantly go back to your heart. You rectify its intention. You purify it. There's obviously diseases that affect this heart. This heart is affected by many diseases. Associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Showing off, doing that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of looking down on people. What's that? That's a disease of the heart. That is arrogance. This heart, there are a lot of diseases that befall it. And also there are acts of worship which are carried out in the heart. You've got to strengthen that side when it comes to tawakkul, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where does a person carry out that act of worship? Where is it carried out? It's carried out in the heart. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, when you realize this concept and you practice upon it, 
you come to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires from us and orders us to be the best people. Imagine somebody who is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only thinking of how to please his maker surely will be somebody who does anything to the best of his ability. That's why Allah Jalla wa Ala, when telling us to speak, he says, Tell my worshippers to say what? To say that which is the best. How does a person say that which is the best? They are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When greeting others, When somebody greets you and you want to return the greeting, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Respond in a way which is better. We know that's the order, but how does a person do that which is better? If your heart is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when you look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum in terms of material, they didn't have more than us. They didn't have the wealth that we have. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of an incident in the Quran. He says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah Jalla wa Ala is pleased with the believers who gave bay'ah to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where was it? Under a tree. What does Allah say? فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah Jalla wa Ala knew that their hearts were pure. Allah Jalla wa Ala knew that their hearts were pure. So regardless of the physical surrounding, regardless of a person's monetary status in society, if your heart is pure and you rectify it and you strengthen it, Allah Jalla wa Ala will grant you goodness.